Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use vinyl to personalize your brother scan and cut STX-125. I'm going to be putting Paper Chef right here on my brother, under the word brother. I've already done a tutorial on how to do this with my CM350 or scan and cut 2. I used black and white vinyl for that project and I'll be doing something similar with just white vinyl because I don't have any more of that other vinyl. So if you want to see, if you want to see how I did it with the CM350, then be sure to look at the link in the description of this video because there'll be a link there to show you how to do this with the CM350. Okay, you will need a piece of white sticker vinyl. I'm using white glossy vinyl and it is by Oracle. Okay, that's the brand. And I believe I bought it in Michael's, maybe it was half price sale. Okay, so it's just it's just regular vinyl and it has a sticker. And I like using the 12 by 12 sheets. I prefer them over the roll because the roll is harder to work with, unless you have an automatic roll feeder, of course, on your machine. Um, one of the things that's different about do, working with vinyl on the STX-125 is that it has a half cut feature. A half cut will cut right through the vinyl, but not the backing. This is the backing. You're also going to need what's called transfer tape. The brand of transfer tape I'm using is by Cricut. It's just a roll that I've been using forever and it's lasted and it, you can, because you can reuse it over and over. Contact paper will also work. After you cut out something with your brother's scanning cut and you try to transfer it to another surface, you want it to line up nicely and the transfer tape helps you to do that precision lining. Okay, so let's get started. Find some vinyl, follow along with whatever you want to personalize. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. I'm going to be using Brother Canvas Workspace for the PC so that I can use fonts on my computer to personalize my scan and cut. See you there. Hello crafty friends. I'm using Brother Canvas Workspace for the PC. It is a free software download from their website. The reason I like using this is when I go into the software and I type text and I type a word like Paper Chef, which I'm going to be cutting out in vinyl, I can use any of the fonts on my computer. I'm going to select that word and show you that I can. I have access to every font that's in my computer. So imagine the design possibilities when you can use any font. If you type a letter, if you're up here and you just type a letter, you could jump down to those, to those other fonts. But I already know I want to go to M for Mrs. and I was just using it so it would have also been on the top of the list. So here I am, I have Mrs. Font, okay? And I'm gonna make it very large so you can see it. I can resize it again later. We wanna do a couple things to this. We want to go and we wanna change this to a, a shape layer. This is, these are the layers over here on the right. If we go up to Edit, Process, Overlap, and remove the overlap, these, these letters, these little tiny bits will not be overlapped anymore. You can't really see it, but I did change my object to a shape. If I go up here to edit, process overlap again, and divide the letters, then I can work with them individually. Why do I want to do that? Well, I think they need to overlap a lot more, and then I'm going to go ahead and weld them together. So you could take your mouse and drag them. I think it's easier to use the nudging tool, nudging arrows, I mean. The arrows are on your keyboard. The arrows that go up, down, right, left are much easier to use. I've overlapped those three letters. I'm going to select the three letters. I'm going to go up to Edit, Process Overlap, and Weld. I've welded them together. I'm going to move the C a little bit closer. And now I have what I want. Now for the E and the R, it's kind of tricky. I've had some trouble with the E and the R. I'm going to just overlap it like that and see if I can make those two weld together. Because the rest of the word did not seem very hard to work with. I'm going to make the E and the R just those two, edit, process, overlap, and weld. A little bit, it's a little bit off. I'm just going to undo and maybe go one pixel to the left. If I don't fix those two letters first, the rest of my word gives me no trouble. That's, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. There's a little tiny nudge right there, but that's fine. All right, so I'm moving the P closer, the A closer using the arrows on my keyboard. Move these to the left. OK, 
Okay, and you also want, the reason you want to cut these all out, if you can, in fewer pieces, is vinyl works, it works better with when you're working with vinyl. Edit, process, overlap. And I'm going to weld these as well. I'm welding these together. You would do this with whatever you want to personalize your project with. I'm moving the P closer. I'll move the whole word chef closer to the left as well. So they're closer together. Actually, I'll probably be putting them on separate lines, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so now I'm going to shrink this whole thing. I'm going to, I'm going to select both, I mean, not both, all four objects here. And I'm going to go up to layers. And you see, I'm just right clicking. This is with my mouse. I'm right clicking anywhere in the layers panel and I'm going to say group. Okay, now they're grouped as one object. So now I can just sort of resize them all at once. I think, let's go to my properties. This is the edit menu over here. I want to see how big it is. Oh, not, not quite as tall. I want them to be at least maybe, I'm thinking 1.25 inches tall. 1.25. If I type 1.25 and hit enter, I maintain the aspect ratio. So the width is 4.78 and the height is 1.25. I'm okay with that. That's a good size because I don't need it to be super big on my machine. Maybe a one and a half inch at the most, but I'm happy with this for my personalization and maybe that way I can fit it on one line. All right, so now we need to save our file. We should have done that earlier. Save as. I'm just going to save it as paper chef. This is just in case you want to make changes to your file later. You didn't need to save your file just to transfer it. But now I'm going to transfer it to my machine. You go to File, Transfer FCM File via the Internet. It's very similar to the process we use on Canvas Workspace Online, where we're transferring it wirelessly. It says the machine registered is ready to download the transferred file. So we're going to say OK. I'm going to stop this recording and I will see you at my brother's scan and cut machine where we will cut this vinyl and apply it to my SDX125. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm taking the piece of white vinyl and I'm applying it to my mat. Okay. If your mat's not very sticky, you can use a piece of painter's tape or something to hold it on. But my, I think it will work. I'm using a brayer my brother to roll the vinyl onto the mat a little better. Now let's make some room. I'm going to bring the machine closer and we're going to cut out this vinyl using the SDX 125. So of course I'm going to load the mat, which is the first step, and I need to retrieve the file we just worked on. Okay, I'm going to turn on my machine. Okay. Let's say retrieve data. Retrieve data right here. I'm going to go ahead and get out a stylus. We're retrieving the data from the, the cloud. That's this one here from Canvas Workspace. That's the little icon. And there is Paper Chef. I'm going to go ahead and load my mat. Now cutting out vinyl is like cutting out anything else. You can cut any of the vinyl, any of the patterns from in your machine cut them out in vinyl, no problem. The reason we used Canvas Workspace is so we could design what we wanted to cut out. All right, now we need to say OK, and we need to say Select, and then Cut. The only difference in cutting vinyl versus cutting any other material is that you want to use a half cut. Go into your settings, the little wrench, you could have done this at the home screen, scroll down to the page two, and most likely your half cut is going to be set to off. So you need the half cut to be set to on. Okay, I mentioned this earlier, but I like to reinforce these concepts. You're trying to use what's called a kiss cut. You're cutting through the top of the vinyl. This is sort of a matte finish, and the other one is glossy, which we're using. And you want to cut through the vinyl, but not the backing. You reach for the backing. This is the backing. Okay, so that's why we're using the half cut. It just makes it a lot easier. So other than that, I used all the default settings when I'm cutting vinyl. And I'm just going to go ahead and say start. Now I have what's called weeding tools. I'll link to those. I just don't have them with me where I'm at right now. So where I'm doing this recording. 
So I'm, I happen to ask my mother, who's a seamstress, if I could use her seam ripper. <laughs> so if any of you sew and you have a seam ripper, this will work as a good weeding tool because it's not too sharp. It's a little bit, see, it's not very sharp on the end. You don't really want to use a needle because you don't want to damage your mat. You just need something that you can help you pick out the parts of the letters in the middle of the letters. Like the middle of an A, you know, the, the middle of an E, things like that. So that's called weeding. And you have to do that before you transfer the vinyl onto, onto the surface. Okay, so it's already done cutting. And we're going to go ahead and say OK and unload the mat. I'm going to move this away. Um, close my machine. And let's see if you can see that. Pretty good. It did a good job cutting the papered chef. There's the word. And maybe it'll, it'll be easier to see once I start weeding it out. Okay, so I'm taking the middle of the P. I'm weeding that out. I'm just weeding. You just take it, take all the pieces you don't want, throw those away before you use the transfer tape. If you do it after, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, so, I mean, it, they'll be hard to get out later. <laughs> so you want to weed out the pieces you don't need. I think I got all the, everything I don't need. So maybe you can see that better. Let me put the light on there. And hopefully you can see the word papered chef, cut out in vinyl. Okay, now I'm ready. Let me zoom in. Ready for my transfer tape. Okay, I'm gonna just move that like that. So I take a piece of transfer tape that's long enough. This piece is long enough. Actually, there's, there's nothing on this one. I have to get a new piece. I forgot to put it back. Oh, here it is, here it is. That will work. <laughs> it got stuck on my roll. You should always put the transfer tape. So when you store your transfer tape, you should store it back together. Put the, piece, put the pieces back together when you store it. Okay, now I'm going to use, it's reusable. And so I'm just rubbing my, you can take a spatula. I'm going to use my Cricut spatula. And I'm rubbing with the transfer tape. So I want that vinyl to stick onto the transfer tape. And if, you, if it doesn't come up right away, then you have to keep doing it again and again until you get it to come up. I think it did come up, so it's good. See? Oh, and I may have forgot to weed out the bottom of the F. I'll show you how to fix that. Everything I do is real life. I'm not reshooting this. We're going to fix it. We're going to work out our issues. Because that's what really happens. You forget to weed out a part. It's no big deal. You know, you transfer tape sticks onto something. It falls on your carpet. No big deal. You, a roll of transfer tape should last you for years and years. I've had that same roll of Cricut transfer tape. Because I used to work with Cricut vinyl. I find Brother Scan and Cut easier to work with. And what I really like about it is all the options for software and all of the free projects they give you online. Cricut, I had to buy so many darn things. I was going broke with that subscription service. All right, see how I'm just peeling it off? And now, remember, I told you I forgot to weed out the, the F, and also there's a couple little, what do we call them, artifacts. I, I should have, like, stuck those other pieces somewhere. So there was the middle of the F. I forgot to weed it out. I'm going to go in and get it now. I told you it's kind of harder to get it later. Barely, probably because I can barely see the darn thing. You don't want to get it off when it's on the machine, though. Like if I stick this to the machine, I'll never get it out of the inside. There's at least a little bit of hope of getting it out now. I probably would use a pin at this point to get it out. Because like the seam ripper is very... So bottom line, make sure you weed your whole project before, not after, because I forgot the F. Come on, F. My viewers want to see how to get this onto the machine. Okay, so I'm going to keep using that spatula, Sarah. I weeded out the F. Whew! That was rough. Okay, now i got my paper chef, and I'm going to put it on the machine precisely. Can you see my machine? Maybe not. Let me move my machine closer. Okay, there's my... I'm going to put it under the word brother. I'm going to center it. Hmm. I think down. I'm going to go down. 
paper chef. I could do papered and then brother chef. No, that won't make sense. Paper chef brother. Um, okay, down. I've decided. Executive decision. It looks probably better down on the bottom. So there you go. So now I'm going to take my spatula again, or whatever you have. You can even use your little spatula that comes on your machine. Rub that on real good to smooth out your vinyl. Now my other one has lasted me a couple years. So I mean, th these last vinyl last on plastic forever. But if you have it, like say, on a coffee mug or something, it doesn't last as long. So maybe like a year though. At least if you have a coffee mug and you or a jar that you use a lot and you wash it, then you can still keep it on there for like a year. This after a while though, you have to replace the vinyl because it starts peeling off. But just don't put vinyl in the dishwasher. And they do make vinyl finishes and people use Mod Podge and all that. I don't do all that. I just use vinyl and when I need more vinyl, I cut out some more vinyl. So basically I'm trying to get one edge to stick. If any edge sticks, the whole rest of the word will stick. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. I don't know what's going on, but I'm just trying to get like the F to stick on the corner. And then if I get the F to stick, there we go. See, the rest of the word will stick. If I can get, that's why you want to use detached letters. So much easier when your letters are attached because see how that just comes right off then. Use whatever side you don't have to fight with and go slow taking off the transfer tape. And then you could take your up, oh, take your spatula one more time and go over. Smooth out that vinyl. One more time, get any bubbles out. I'm very happy. There it is. Voila. My machine is personalized. So go personalize your machine, crafty friends. And lastly, I want to say, I launched a Patreon campaign just yesterday, the day before, kind of officially. And I want to thank all my new patrons who are supporting my channel and making more tutorials possible and earning perks at the same time. So thank you. You guys are the best. I love you. Bye.